For this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at solving systems of equations, but we're going to introduce a new idea, a new mechanic for solving systems of equations. We're going to be focusing on systems of three equations, and this is setting us up for an upcoming lesson, but it's also just a, a generally useful technique to be used. As your systems get larger, this technique actually becomes more and more powerful and more and more useful, and it also is a lot more streamlined. So for those of you who have a a slightly, uh, let's call it a lazier approach to things, this will appeal to you because this goes into the laziness of mathematics, trying to get things done as efficiently as possible. So if I have three equations here, in this case I have three equations and three unknowns, let me label those one, two, and three. With three equations and three unknowns, you can see here the, the coefficient of x is one, the coefficient of y is two, and the coefficient of z is two and that's represented here, 1, 2, 2. So this is equation 1, this is the x, this is the y, and this is the z. Then we have equation 2. Equation 2 has an x component with a 1 coefficient, a y component with a 1 coefficient, and there's no z, co uh, no, z, no z component, so the coefficient is 0. And then finally, we have equation 3, 2, 3, negative 1. Now this is the coefficient matrix. Generally we're not going to be working with the coefficient matrix on its own. Far more useful is what's known as the augmented matrix, which is made up, made up of the components, but it's also made up of the coefficients or the constants in that final column. So this is still equation 1, this is equation 2, and this is equation 3. And this augmented matrix is what we're going to be focusing on. So now that we have this augmented matrix to represent our system of equations, what can we do with it? Well, first of all, mechanically, really there's only three things that we're going to do. We can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. We can exchange any pair of rows if we want to. Or we can add or subtract a multiple of one row to a second row, and that replaces the second row. Now, sometimes people are not comfortable doing three all in one step. And if that's the case, then you should feel free to add extra steps where you only do one or you only do two. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just going to result in you doing some extra steps some of the time. As an example, here is the augmented matrix that we started with. And so one thing we might do here, now I've done something that is actually in the direction that we want to go, but Regardless, you can do these operations wherever you like. I took row 1 and I multiplied everything in row 1 by negative 1. So what I'm going to do, let me show you this. This is the final result. Negative 1 row 1 plus row 2 replaces row 2. But this could easily be broken up into two steps. What I like to suggest is just use arrows. So we say this matrix is going to become another matrix. And then I recommend that you actually uh, write what you're going to change here. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to say negative 1 times row 1. So I'm going to say negative R1. And I'm not going to, to put that anywhere else. So negative R1 is just going to become negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and then the constant is negative 9, and the other rows stay the same. So 1, 1, 0, 1, and 2, 3, negative 1, 1. That was my first step. And now I'm going to take this negative row 1, which is now called row 1. We don't, we don't keep track of these after we perform the operation. So now I'm going to take row 1 and I'm going to add it to row 2. And it's understood that when I do this, these two things together are going to become the new row 2. So you don't have to write this second part. When you say row 1 plus row 2, it's understood that this is being replaced.
And so row one is being added to row two, but row one itself is not changing. So actually, you know what, rather than writing in row one, let me just focus on the row that's going to be changed. I wish I had done this in the color before. So I'm going to take row two and I'm going to add row one to it. So negative one plus one becomes zero. That's going to be in the middle. Negative two plus one becomes negative one. Negative two plus zero becomes negative two. And then one plus negative nine becomes negative eight. And my other rows stay the same. So that's negative one, negative two, negative two, negative nine and 2, 3, negative 1, 1. A vertical line to represent the constants. Now, if you take a look at what I did here in two steps versus what I did here in one step, you'll notice they're not quite the same. That row 2 matches up nicely, but row 1 has actually changed. This one is the negative of the row 1 here. And that's because I chose to do it in two steps. Both of these are still correct, and I could easily multiply row 1 by negative 1 again to get exactly this. As we move forward, you're going to see there's actually an advantage in having coefficients that are positive in key locations. In this case, the key location is here. I actually want that to be that positive, and I actually want it to be positive 1 eventually. But for now, we don't need to worry about that too much. Just understand that we could switch to get exactly this if we wanted to. Now, to actually solve these, it's one thing to manipulate these matrices, but to actually solve them, we want to put them into what's known as row echelon form. And in row echelon form, in this case we're using three equations, so we want to create a lower left triangle that's all zeros and we want to create an upper right triangle that is non-zero. Now it actually doesn't matter if there are some zeros in here. The important part is going to be that we've got the zeros in the bottom left and then what we want is as many of these top right ones to be non-zero as possible. We don't concern ourselves with the coefficients because the coefficients are where we're going to start to get our answers from. So that's when we talk about row echelon form, we're looking for something in this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the matrix that we started on before and we're going to change that into row echelon form. So what do I want to do? I already have this zero in place. I already have, well, the top row can be filled anyway. So you can see the top row is entirely filled, so that's fine 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 the middle row is supposed to be a zero and then two other things so those ones are already done so what I need to do something about is I need to change this into a zero and I need to change this into a zero so let's do these one at a time so how am I going to change that first one into a zero what operation will I use to change this into a zero and so if you take a look, I think I'm going to need a longer arrow here to write out what I want to write. If I want to get rid of this 2, the easiest way to get rid of this 2 would be to subtract 2, and I can make this 1 into a negative 2. So I'm going to take negative 2 times row 1, and I'm going to add that to row 3, and then I'm going to replace row 3 with that. So what does that look like? Negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3. So you can see I'm doing this in one step here. So negative 2 times this is negative 2, plus this gives me a 0 here, and that's what I want. Negative 2 times this value is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1, and negative 2 times this value is also negative 4, plus negative 1 is negative 5, negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus 1 is negative 17. So that's my first step, and that's this line, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the other ones, 1, 2, 2, 9, and 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 8. 
a vertical line between the coefficients of the variables and the constants, and then I close out the matrix. Okay, that's good. Now we have accomplished a zero here, and notice this is not a three anymore, now it's a negative one. So I want to deal with these things one at a time. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll actually be able to get two taken care of, but that's not normally going to be the case. So what change will I make now to get rid of this negative one? Well, we don't want to do anything with row one because that would reintroduce a number into the first column and we don't want that. But because we started to assemble this in row echelon form, we have a zero here in row two which no longer can affect this first column. So how do we manipulate the second row to result in the third row being zero? And the answer to that is I'm going to take the second row, but I'm going to, I'm going to take the second row, but I'm going to take the negative of the second row. I'm going to add it to the third row and I'm going to replace the third row with that. And so what does my third row become? Well, what's the negative of zero? Negative of zero is zero, plus zero is still zero. The negative of negative one is positive one, plus negative one is zero, that's what we were looking for. The negative of negative two is positive two, plus negative five is negative three. And the negative of negative eight is positive eight, plus negative 17 is negative nine. And then I'll go ahead and fill in the other rows 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 8, 1, 2, 2, 9. And now I have row echelon form. I have zeros in the bottom, that bottom triangle, and I have non-zeros everywhere else. So now that I've done that, how is this going to help us to solve this? How is this going to help us come up with a solution? And the way that that works is we take this row echelon form and then we rewrite it or we think of it. Actually, no, we rewrite it in terms of the variables and coefficients again. So 1, 2, 2, 9 is the same as x plus 2y plus 2z equals 9. 0, negative 1, 2, negative 8 becomes negative y minus 2z equals negative 8. And most importantly, because these ones are zeros for the x and zeros for the y, we just end up with negative 3z equals negative 9. And having that, we can now solve. If negative 3z is equal to negative 9, then z is equal to positive 3. Well, there's our first answer. If negative y minus 2z is equal to negative 8, that means that negative y minus 2 times 3 is equal to negative 8, which means it actually makes more sense. I'll bring the 8 over here, minus 6, and I'll take the negative y, move it over here, it becomes positive y, and we end up with y equals 2. And then finally, I don't like using check marks there, and then finally we have x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 9, which is actually our first equation from the original question. So we get x plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3 is equal to 9, and so x plus 4 plus 6 equals 9, x equals negative 1. And there's our solution to our system of equations. Now the reasonable thing to ask here would be, couldn't I have done that just by solving the original system of equations? And absolutely yes, you could have. I'm showing you an alternate method, and until you get used to this method, it's not going to be faster, and it's not going to be easier. But I can assure you that once you get used to this, it actually is a very useful method, and it really can streamline things for you. But be assured that if it, if it doesn't work out for you, you can always fall back to using just systems of equations. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to force anybody to be using this. Okay, now there's an even better way. If you're going to use matrices, it doesn't actually make a lot of sense to keep switching back and forth between matrices and systems of equations. So rather than stopping at row echelon form, 
there's another form which is known as the reduced row echelon form. Another way of describing this is called as it's called the Gauss excuse me, it's called the Gauss Jordan elimination. And what you actually want to do there is get a lower triangle and upper triangle of zeros. And if you can do that, if you can get one zero zero and some number, that number could be a zero also, but we don't really we don't try to make zeros here. It's whatever lands here for ABC, so be it. But if we have one zero zero equals a, that's the same as the equation x equal a. And that means that my x value is a. And so now not only are we looking to create those triangles of zeros, but we're also trying to create a set of coefficients along the diagonal that are all positive one. So we're going to take, we're going to rewind the clock, or sorry, no, we're not rewinding. We're going to start with our row echelon form that we came up in the previous exercise, and we're going to continue from there, and we're going to put this into a reduced row echelon form. So if we're going to change this to reduced row echelon form, what can we start with? Well, probably the easiest thing is to start with row three. And I'm, going, I'm not going to skip steps here. Another thing you can do is you can actually combine some steps. So for example, it might be very easy to, we want this to be a one, for example. And so the fact that this is a negative one, we might, we might combine these two steps that I'm about to do. Let me do the steps first. I'm going to take row two, I'm going to take negative row 2. And so my first row, I'm happy with that 1 being there. So I'm going to write that as 1, 2, 2, 9. I'm going to take my second row, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. So that becomes 1, 2, 8. And I'll take my third row and leave it alone for now. And my vertical bar, and close the matrix. Now the other step I need to take right away, or at least it's a, a simple step to take right away, is to take row 3 and multiply it by, well it's actually going to be negative row 3 divided by 3, or negative 1 third row 3. So if I do that, my first row remains unchanged. My second row, I modified on the previous one, and 0, 0, divide negative 3 by negative 3, and I get positive 1. Divide negative 9 by negative 3, and I get positive 3. And in doing that, I now have my diagonals are 1s. Now these two steps were simple enough on their own that you could actually combine these together. So you could do, maybe you could put one notation above the arrow, another one below. Just don't make too many changes at once. If you don't like this notation with the arrow, this is not a, uh, a written in stone type rule. You could also just do a, a little note here. Maybe you prefer to say um, negative, maybe you prefer something like I wrote up here when we first started. You might like something that's more of a statement. Well, that's fine. If you want to put in that, that line about replaces, that is also fine as well. Whatever works for you so long as you are communicating clearly what it is you are trying to do. So now that I've got this, I need to start getting rid of this upper triangle. So since uh, row 2 is almost complete, let's focus on this one. So what we're going to do is, how do we get rid of this? Well, to get rid of this 2, we want to subtract 2. And I don't want to introduce any changes to either of these first two, to the x or to the y locations. So I'm going to use row 3. So to accomplish this, I'm going to take negative 2 of row 3. That's going to give me a negative 2 here. And I'm going to add that to row 2. And I'm going to replace row 2 at the same time. So row 1 remains unchanged. And I'll do this one in color because it's a little bit more specific. So we take negative 2 times row 3. So that's 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2, sorry, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. But don't forget we have to do this one as well. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is positive 2.
and then we go ahead and rewrite 0, 0, 1, 3. And now this one is in that nice diagonal form. And again, there's an opportunity here if you wanted to combine steps. It would be a, be a rather involved step. But my next two lines I'm doing, technically, I could do them all in one step. But I'm going to do them as two. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this two. So how do I get rid of this two? I'm going to take negative 2 times rho 2. That's going to bring this negative 1 and turn it this positive 1 turn it into a negative 2. And I'm going to add that to rho 1. So the 1 here is unaffected. This becomes 0. This is a 0, so it doesn't change the 2 that's there. And then negative 2 times positive 2, that's negative 4 plus 9 is positive 5. And then I just rewrite out my other rows. And now the last thing I need to do is get rid of that too. So the way that I'm going to do that is this time I'm going to make use of row 3 because it has a, a 1 in that column. So I'm going to take negative 2 times row 3 plus row 1 and I'm going to replace row 1 with it. And so I get the 1 is unchanged. There's nothing here. The 0 here doesn't change the 1. The 0 here doesn't change the 0. We're doing this so we get negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And then I have to take this value, which becomes negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. And we end up with 0, 1, 0, and a 2. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and a 3. And now we can read our answer directly from here. x equals negative 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. And I hope that those are the same answers that we achieved here. x equals negative 1, y equals 2, z equals 3. And that's it for your introduction to matrices. Uh, in particular, this three-row matrix is going to be something we're going to make use of in an upcoming lesson. You can see that there are a number of exercises here. This is really very mechanical. You just need to practice it. These are algebraic skills. There's nothing really deep about this because the understanding part is it's a system of equations. So these are mechanical skills that we're practicing with this one.